Isla here and I'd like to give you a wee update as to what we've been up to on the Cormarty Seascape project in recent weeks. It is in the Scottish Highlands if you're not familiar with it and it focuses on native oysters and seagrass. So first and foremost, excitingly we've taken on a new member of, to the team and uh, yeah she's been a fantastic help. Uh, she's called Josie and excitingly also she has adopted, uh, adopt, rescued a border collie puppy called Moss. So Moss has accompanied us on one of the surveys so far which was an adorable experience. Um, but don't worry we didn't get too distracted. Hello! <laughs> I'm Josie, I'm the new project officer for Mossy Earth's Cromer TC Skip project up here in Scotland. What do you like to do in your spare time? Oh, I love bird watching. You so love bird watching? It's a pretty good job. I'm around us just now, actually. So at the same time as doing my work, I'm looking up every so often to see what I can see. Um, love swimming as well. There's lots of rivers and lochs in Scotland to do that, so that's perfect. Yeah. yeah. And uh, favourite and worst moment of fieldwork season with us so far? Oh, favourite is easy. Uh -huh. um, the first day we were out doing sediment sampling. We had oh, I know what you're going to say. An amazing <laughs> otter encounter. So we had two otters that were with us for almost the entire time. So it was like two hours that we were out there um, and they were super close. So that was amazing. And the worst? That's hard actually. <laughs> I guess embarrassing is I. I was taking Green Bay by trolley over the salt marsh and kind of let go a moment and dropped quite a lot of the stuff inside. So we do great. actually have a clip of that by the way, Barry, if you want to look into the <laughs> into the Google Drive. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, oh god, oh god. Up here. Okay. Right. Yeah. How low it, can I, I spot though? You, you do this because you can sit. Oh yeah. I'll get these four. It doesn't look like it's really muddy in the bottom there. Okay, so the box. So tight. <laughs> <laughs> we found the limits of the, of the kiddies. Okay. Is that it? <sighs> Treacherous. We have also been busily getting on with field work. So um, just after I spoke to you last. The Society for the Protection of Underground Networks, or SPUN, came out to the project area and they were having a wee look at uh, taking samples from seagrass roots and also sediments surrounding seagrass to see whether they could find any fungal evidence of fungal symbionts with seagrasses that might uh, inform restoration if they are to be present within the project area. So that was really exciting. Uh, we had a lot of fun and playing in the mud and uh, yeah, we'll have results from that hopefully in the next few months, which I will be able to share with you. So Bethan, do you want to talk me through what you guys are doing right now? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so there's been quite a lot of work into the seagrass microbiome. So what, what bacteria ha are living in symbiosis with these seagrasses, but there's not been so much work on the microbiome. So the fungi that live with seagrasses and we're really hoping to see what fungal symbionts are helping these seagrasses live in these sort of i would say more difficult nutrient conditions because fungi are really good at providing nutrients to plant partners to their plant hosts so we're hoping to see who's here i'm here with josie Hello. our new project officer and we are just recording some uh information about the seagrasses here at Charleston which is in the Bewley Firth. So in this quadrat we actually have three different species. Uh, we've got Zostera marina which is here and you can see it has like nice 
thick leaves. We've got Zostera Naltii, which is here, uh, dwarf field grass, which has got much narrower, sort of strap-like leaves. And we also have, um, which is related to them, um, let me find a good example, beaked tassel weed or Rupia maritima, which is here, which you see has kind of like, oh, it's quite difficult to show you in this, like thinner leaves than the multi. Um, and just a slightly different structure there to who you are. I'm not sure if that's picking that up. But yeah, so we've got um, two species of classic uh, sea grasses. So that's the uh, Zostera marina and Nano Zostera naltii. And then we've got a widgeon grass, uh, Rupia maritima, which is not thought to be strictly a sea grass by um, a few, well, by botanists. Some botanists is a more of a freshwater species that is tolerant of uh, saline water. Um, but I don't know, it's existing along sea grasses here, alongside sea grasses here, so I think we're fairly happy to say that it's a sea grass too. There's a nice example of it as well. I'm here with uh, Bethan and Sean from Spun. So, what are we getting up to? We're in Rosemarkey right now, aren't we? Yes, so we're going to do our first subtitle seagrass sampling for mycorrhizal fungi or fungal symbionts. And it's our first time sampling for mycorrhizal fungi in the sea, which is very exciting for us. And Sean's going to go down diving. I am, and it's going to be interesting because we've been doing intertidal sampling and this is our first subtitle sample. And obviously in an intertidal environment, you know, the plants are exposed to more variable temperatures and salinity uh, and conditions you know, half the day in the air and half in the water. So this is permanently submerged plants. And we're really excited yeah. to see what we find. Awesome. So quick. Yeah. I'm going to get a little bit of water. Yeah, yeah. All good. Half of the leg. So. Look good. Yeah. Awesome. I can stash that in the bag. I might hang here for a bit. Yeah, yeah, do it. Get yeah, it's actually easier to have something holding on the board because there's a bit of drift. Oh, okay. Um, so, so these are way bigger than the other ones, so I didn't make foil big enough. But yeah, it's definitely a, like a different type of material. Aren't they? Yeah, they're so big, crazy. So it's plenty of material to work with. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in addition to that, we have been looking into the sediments in the project area. So the sediment sampling is now complete, and so we've been out, uh, Josie. Um, Emily and I, so Emily is our geotechnical consultant, uh, having a, taking some samples from various locations within the project area. Uh, we tried to overlap these with some of the uh, mycorrhizal sampling locations. Um, and yeah, it'll be really interesting to see the results from that. I'm chatting to you from Merkinch Local Nature Reserve, which is just on the outskirts of Inverness. And today is our final day of sediment sampling work this season. And yeah, I'm out here with, I don't know if you can see them in the background there, but uh, Josie and Emily are just over there. I will uh, go and speak to them shortly and you'll hear from them too. But these sediment sampling works are part of our seagrass uh, work this year, which is effectively looking to get a really good baseline of the uh, extent of seagrass meadows within the project area or within some areas within the project area. The project area is quite large, as well as the chemical composition of the sediments where seagrass is found and also where seagrass used to be found but is no longer present. So, yeah, it's been really exciting work, and this is part of the this project is funded by the Scottish Government's Nature Restoration Fund managed by Nature Scott. So, without further ado, I'm going to stop uh, sort of ambling along the intertidal and go and have a wee chat to Emily and Josie and see how they're getting on. We're now at a site to the west of Merkinch Local Nature Reserve, uh, Lentrum. Lentrum. <laughs> In the Beely Firth and uh, just fill it, wrapping up sediment sampling works with our final sample. How's it feel guys? 
Yeah, an achievement for sure, but glad it's over. Glad it's over, yeah. <laughs> so, to not get stuck in a bog twice a week. Correct me if I'm wrong, Emily, but we've taken uh, 60 particle size distribution samples yep. and 30 chemical sweet samples. Yep. Yep. So, that's quite a few samples, all in all, 90, uh, throughout the Cromer E, Bewley, and Inverness Firths at different locations. And now, yeah, this last batch, we're just going to package up, take it to the uh, distributor where it's going to get sent off. That's the last one. <laughs> oh my goodness, he just tried to nibble a wee bit. <laughs> Moss. Here, at least wait until we've tested it. That's the last sample in the bag and uh, now what we do is on the day of sampling, at the end of the day, we package them up and send them straight to take them straight to the distributor's kind of office and then they get sent down the road for testing. So this is the last shipment. Yay. Go Moss, let's go. Let's go. He's like, nah, this stuff is so tasty. <laughs> go, let's go. Let's run, run quickly in this direction. Go on. There's really interesting stuff over here. <laughs> We've also been working with a drone operator, uh, James Bunyan of Tracks Ecology, to map um, the extents of seagrass meadows within approximately 1,100 hectares of suitable intertidal habitat. So he's finished his works now too, and he's going to get, uh, get on with uh, processing the data. And we are going to see whether we can use machine learning to map the extents of the seagrass meadows rather than drawing on polygons by eye, which is what a lot of um, folk have been doing. Um, so hopefully that machine learning process can work for us here. So yeah, we're using the DJI M350 airframe, um, which has got a twin battery, um, which is great for redundancy. And also we've got about a flight time, about 35 minutes if we're lucky. Uh, and the sensor we're using is the DJI P1, um, which is a, a great sensor for kind of mapping and industrial inspection and things like that. Uh, so it's a 45 megapixel um, sensor and yeah, just provides very, very good imagery. And we're collecting raw imagery as well as JPEGs so we can try and get the images as, as best as we can through a bit of post-processing to pull out the, the seagrass that we're looking for. Nice. Do you want to talk me through some of the challenges that you've faced over the past couple of weeks trying to get all well, of the areas captured? <laughs> yeah, I mean, flying drones in Scotland is always uh, entertaining. Um, but uh, yeah, with a combination of weather, tides and light conditions, it's been uh, a bit of a struggle to find windows to, uh, to get out. And hugely variable tides, eh? Yeah, very much so. Very low today. Um, but previously, when the weather's been good, they've been relatively high, low tides, as it were. Um, so yeah, challenging to get as much coverage as we can. If only the seagrass stayed alive for longer throughout the year, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, although the weather gets worse into winter, so... Yeah, we have, well, I think last time I spoke to you about the native oyster nursery, I mentioned that we had one final uh, sort of permission to get before the nursery was able to go in. So unfortunately, um, that ended up being a wee bit of a, uh, a blocker for us over recent weeks. So the nursery is still not in, um, but I am determined to get it in this year. Um, and as soon as we have a more concrete kind of update on that for you, I will let you know. Last but not least, I would like to thank our Mossy Earth members. Um, you guys are the ones that make it possible for us to be able to do these projects. Um, yeah, you guys are the ones that are helping us to enact change in the areas that we work. So thank you very much. All of the Cromarty Seascape team appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'll check in with you in a few weeks. And yeah, we'll see how things are going then. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>